Hi, stitching friends. Welcome back to my sewing room. Yes, that quilt on the wall behind me is still there, but I'm working on it and I'm making progress. You might be able to tell. What I'm going to do today in this floss tube are two things. First, I want to show you an economical way to prepare your stitching for framing. Now that's if you have a standard size that you're going to do. It's not very expensive and I've made a clip for that. So we'll watch that now and then we'll come back and I'll talk to you about a question I had regarding the universal craft stand that holds my scroll bar and my cue snap when I'm doing my cross stitching. It is a, was a good question and I show the vid, I took a video of me using it so you can see how to see the back of your work and other things. Okay, let's get on with the framing. Hi friends, I am going to try something and if you're watching this, it worked. I'm gonna take this embroidery project that I had embroidered and finished from years ago and I really like it, but I'm going to try and frame it. So I'm going to move my camera and let you see how I'm going to mount it on the stretcher bars. Okay, see you in a minute. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I bought this pack of 5x7 um, canvas, artist canvas, and it was $249 for both of them, so that wasn't very expensive. And, yes, it was $249. So, let's open this up. Ooh, I hate to use my good scissors, but I'm going to just because I don't have to. So. so. 5x7 Artist Canvas 249. If you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, you can go to um, any artist supply store or any dis many discount stores have them, or I'm sure you can look for them on um, Amazon. I'll find try to find that. It's called the Fine Touch Archival Grade, which I thought was kind of important. The second one is still wrapped in its plastic, so that's good for preserving it. So, okay, here we go. Let me see. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is try and center it, making sure the lines are somewhat straight. My design goes a hair over the edges, but that's okay. Let me see if that will be right here and here. Yes, that's right. So why does that look crooked when I flip it? not crooked. I think the design is straight even though the words look crooked. So now I'm going to use a stapler and open it up, just a cheap stapler, and I'm going to staple. Oh, there's a staple right there, so I have to be careful I don't hit the same staple. On that side just one, and on this side just one, kind of pulling it evenly. And it's not to the point where I can't take it out if I want to. So let's double check. Oh, I think it looks pretty good. So I'm going to keep stapling. And I want to go evenly. I did the centers. Now I want to go one on each side, one on each side, one on each side. And yes, it might seem like overkill, but it'll help it to stretch evenly for the design on the front. And yes, some of my staples went in a little crooked, but they're still holding. This is kind of fun. Now, I'm at the corner. So the corner can just go folded right up like that, and then I will pull that corner down. So I'm going to make it 
be somewhat mitered. You can kind of see there's a line right here, right here. So I'm going to follow that line on all four corners and pull this in and staple right up to that line. But I'm trying to leave spot here so when I pull it down, I'm giving it quite a tug. So you can see the corner. Whoops, sorry. So you can see the corner and it looks smooth on the front. And I know some of you probably have much better ideas and if you do, please share them in the comments because, oops, I put that one a little close. I hope I still have room for my final corner staple. Let's do one right here too. So now I am pulling it by the point, making it somewhat even, and pulling it flat. I'm going to staple as close to the corner as I can. And I don't think it needs it, but I could put one right there if I wanted to. But let's, let's finish all the way around first. This one needs a bit of a pull right there. Okay, so... Oh, that didn't go in at all. Let's get a different handle on this. There we go. There we go. Now I'm pulling. I am pulling on this, pulling it down straight to the point, evenly, aiming where there's not another staple. And that didn't go in good, so let's do it one there too. So I had to do two on that one to make sure. And it's holding good. I still feel like I need another one right here. So I'll do that. So we'll get that one, get that one. We'll do it this way. That one. And now pull it down. Pull down on the point. Make sure it's good, yes, and I get it with the wood. Felt it slip a little, so I'm going to do a second one here too. Okay, so, oh, that one came out. Let me do another one here. So if you feel a need, you could lace it, but I don't feel a need. And now it's ready to just go slip into a frame that's designed for a 5 by 7 um, canvas. Okay, I hope that helped. My next step is to go find a frame. I have a photo frame, but I don't think it's thick enough. I'll try it out and let you know. Okay, thank you for watching. Here's the back again. Okay, so that's how I do the stretcher bar, the canvas that's on pre-stretched onto stretcher bars, and then put my design on it. You could use any um, design that you've done, count and cross stitch, anything that's kind of fabric that you can kind of stretch back. But it worked out so well, and I'm looking forward to seeing if, I didn't go to the frame section in Hobby Lobby, but to see what kind of frames they have that an artist stretcher bar canvas can slip into that is as deep as this or close to it so that it can hang nicely. Okay, so now the question I got for my Universal Crafts stand that I did the unboxing for in Floss Tube 7 is how do you tie off your threads in the back? So I do kind of a brief um, video, uh, no, a brief demonstration of how I do this by putting my camera right next to my chair. So I hope you can see it, but it answers the question that I got. Also, I had a little problem with my frame slipping, so I try to explain that too, how I fixed that. The second one that's going to be tagged on is how I use the Q-snap. Okay, I hope it helps and answers any questions that you have. So before I show you how to see the back, I'm going to load my scroll bar on there. 
Now the problem I was talking about that I noticed is when I had the scroll bar on, I hadn't put something protective right here. I, I scroll with the back on the outside in case something gets on it. But still, I, I feel something needs to be there. But as I was stitching, it would start slipping and slipping. So I found myself holding it with my forearm on this side to hold it up and then stitch. So my answer to that problem was my husband buys and sells units and to um, supplement our Social Security. So in one of his storage units was this pack uh, for a 5 by 8 rug of um, hold tight non-slip rug cushion. I went into my closet of wonders to find um, I thought the grippies that you sew on the bottom of pajama feet would work. But then I saw this and I thought, oh, that would work better and it was cheaper. So I cut myself off just a little rectangle. I didn't, can't press it, of course, because it's rubber. And I'm putting it on right here and I'm hoping that will give it some little extra grip. We'll see, and I probably won't even know till I've stitched with it for a while. So now when you put your project in there, I kind of try and center it. Yes, I do. I'm going to, whoops, backwards, tighten it down. You squeeze it with your hand you can make sure it's tight enough because sometimes it feels tight but the screw hasn't really caught hold so there we go so far it seems to just be holding steady it's not moving so maybe my my answer worked okay so now let's say I'm stitching along and I want to um, pull my thread down through the back I stick it on a magnet that I have there this knob right here, I, I've got my other hand right here holding that steady and I'm unscrewing this knob and then it rotates up so I can see the back. Then I can just work with how I can tighten the knob and then thread my, I can tighten the knob and tie my thread off in the back like I like to do sometimes. Most of the time I do like to do a pin stitch or something from the front if I can. Put this down. Because um, that way I don't even have to lift it up. And there's some really good videos on doing a pin stitch from the front. I often do the loop method for going in if I have two threads. So that works out really good for me. Okay, I hope this answered any questions. And boy, that rug back really did make this much more stable. I'm very happy with it. So I'm going to pause the video and set up my cue snap. And you can watch me do that too. But first, as I take this out, I want to show you something that I learned from my other stand. When you're removing it, oh man, that rug, rug stuff held so good. When you're removing it, sometimes because of the angle here, it's still holding on. So you have to um, be patient. Come on. Oh, I got that one tight. And you almost have to pull this apart yourself pull the back up like that. Did you hear that snap? And then it will slip right out. Otherwise it wants to um, stay like this and hold it in the front and only the back is loosening up. So you have to kind of give it a little push to separate it. Okay, I'm going to try my cue snap now. I had found my cue snap um, slid even more when I had my grime guard on it. So let's see if this helps 
more. And I can still slip my grime guard on the sides just to hold this extra fabric. Let me see here. Okay, I need to undo it a little bit more because it's a little thicker. And did you see I had to pull that down just to make sure it was open? Okay. Kind of pushing it with my body, <laughs> too. And one thing I found about these things, you always say lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, but these are lefty, tidy, righty, loosey. Just these two. Maybe if I put them in upside down. That seems to, it, it can move because the cl clamp will move a little. But yeah, that holds it really good. This has just turned out to be, this stand has just turned out to be exactly what I need. And I'm gonna take a snapshot of my little stitching area with it there without me in it because I don't have someone here to do that for me then you can kind of get a feel of how that sits with a chair. I have a small stitching chair because it fits me better. And the stand goes under the legs of it really well. Okay, thank you for listening. I'm going to finish this YouTube with a picture of my little stitching chair with the universal craft stand in front of it and how nicely it fits. Thank you for visiting my sewing room and my stitching spot. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.